Welcome to another video all about formative assessments. This video goes over the online resource of Padlet and specifically using Padlet for formative assessments. So if that's something you're interested in, please stay tuned. Welcome to another video all about strategies for teaching students with disabilities. This video is specifically about formative assessments using Padlet, which is an online website resource that we are going to dive into today. So just a reminder, formative assessments versus summative assessments. If you didn't watch my overview video, I'll have that linked down below so you can go watch it. But basically, formative assessments are short and they inform our practice as educators. Who may benefit from formative assessments? Pretty much everyone, including us educators. If we're trying to make our lessons the best they can be and educate all of our students, formative assessments help identify the gaps in learning. And this is especially fantastic for students with disabilities. So here are some formative assessment resources. I have an entire playlist. I think there are now three videos linked down below in this formative assessment series I'm doing. Today we are covering Padlet. So coming up, we have a Padlet overview, making a Padlet, and then finally using Padlet specifically for formative assessments. So let's dive in to the first part. First thing you want to do is Google up Padlet. It's padlet.com. Then as you can see, I have already made some Padlets. And this little dashboard is where I can see all of the Padlets that have been shared to me as well. So if you look, I did not make this Padlet. These are all of my Padlets, and this is one from my coworker. But what if I didn't have any Padlets made? This is a brand new account. I just made it with my DOE email login. Let's make a Padlet together. And first off, we have a lot of different layouts to choose from. We have a timeline where students can write on a timeline. We have a canvas. It's kind of more scattered, a little less structured. A map, pretty self-explanatory. And then we have a back channel where it's it kind of looks like students are texting, maybe back and forth, or maybe as a class. It's more like a group text layout. Then we have a shelf. This is a popular layout. We want to preview. We have all of these columns, kind of like our shelves, that students can add comments on, and it's a lot more structured. And if we want to preview any of these, we can hit this preview but button and preview what the layout looks like. Then we have a grid where students post in a grid format, and the boxes, I believe, have set heights and widths, so uh, students really get that grid square layout. Then we have a stream, which is much like um, if you were scrolling through Instagram, it's just a stream of information and students and students' comments. Then we have a wall. Now, now this is my favorite one, the wall. It just, it's most simple, I think. So let's select this wall and make a wall. Then we're going to be directed towards something that looks like this. We're going to give it a title. So our title is title of the Padlet and our description is science class 2021. And as you can see, that is over here and the students will see this. The icon, you can choose a fun little icon. They have plenty of options. Then this little icon will appear up here and in this little card up above. Then we can change our address. So if you want the link to be something that students can type in, we can type in something like science questions for me. And this, they can go to padlet.com slash your username, science questions for me, and it'll take you straight to this Padlet. The wallpaper, of course, we can change the wallpaper. And then we can even add our own wallpaper. Make sure that the image is big enough. You can filter. Google Images to only show you large images. Make sure those images are large so they look really nice on the Pear Deck. On the Padlet, I mean. Then we can choose our font. I'm just going to stay with the... Let's go with this one. Then here we have some options. So attributions. Do we want to display the author name above each post? Yes. This will require students to sign in and it will give 
credit to the author of the post. And if we're doing formative assessments, we need to know the students' names in order to best target their needs. And also we can identify patterns. Perhaps all of your kids without IEPs understood the material and perhaps all of the kids with IEPs did not understand the material. And that is very important data for educators. So new post position, where do new posts appear first or last? I usually do last because I like to make a sample post myself where kids can, where students can look at an example. And so I want my example post to be first. Allow viewers to comment on posts, we can definitely do that. We can add some reactions where students can like posts or they can upvote or downvote posts. Um, give posts one through five stars if you're doing like a rating system. And you can also give numeric scores to posts. Usually I just like the posts, but this star and grade feature has a lot of potential, especially for formative assessments and for having students reflect on their own work. All right, content filtering. Padlet offers some content filtering. I've never used, I've never needed to use it, but it is helpful just in case. So require approval. I don't usually do that one because I don't want to spend the time <laughs> approving all 200 of my students' posts. But if you have a smaller pool of students, that might be something that's more doable for you. Filter profanity. I always do this one just in case. And then we are going to, I'm going to move myself over, and then we are going to save it and close. So unfortunately, that is all the time I have for part one. Make sure to subscribe in order to see part two, which is coming soon.